Hey guys, welcome back to another processing tutorial. We're on part two of the falling ball game. Uh, so just to show you what the end result again will look like. Uh, we'll have a game where you basically just juggle a ball and it counts your score and how many times you click it. That's pretty much what the game is. And what we have from the last video is just a falling ball. Doesn't do anything else but that. Um, on screen is the code from last time, a pretty simple setup where we just create a variable for the ball y and basically just add to that ball y to make the ball fall downwards. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to make a ball class instead, just make it its own object. And uh, we'll also add, uh, we'll either add acceleration or we'll just add a means to uh, reset the ball. Uh, and whichever one we don't do, we'll cover in the next video. But the main content for this one is just to create the ball class in processing. Uh, so to create a new class, uh, you can do it either in your sketch or you can create a new file. I prefer a new file just to keep things clean. So up here, we'll have an arrow, do a new tab, we'll call it ball. And this creates a new processing file within your main sketch in your folder. And this is where we're going to go ahead and create a ball class. So to do that, we need to call the keyword class. We'll call this ball. And then open and close parentheses. And it's within these open and closed uh, curly brackets uh, where all of the code is going to go. Uh, that's where we're going to do things like declare our variables. That's where we're going to create our functions. And that's pretty much where all the code's going to live. So before we put any kind of code, we need to, in our main sketch, uh, initialize uh, this object. So to do that, uh, we'll call it uh, ball. So we got to do capital B A L L because that's the name of our class here. That's how I named it. And then that's the class that we want to basically initialize to. And what do we want to name this variable? We'll call it ball. And then we'll do the, uh, curly, not curly brackets, the uh, semicolon. Now that we initialized the object, now we need to actually, you know, make it <laughs> pretty much. And I don't know how better way to explain it, but what you need to do is uh, ball equals new ball, open close parentheses, semicolon. So now we have an actual ball object. But if we play, you know, it still looks the same. We actually aren't even doing anything with this new ball object. So we basically need to move the main logic of actually drawing our ball and, you know, updating our ball. We need to move all that code into the actual uh, ball class. Now, again, you can name this class whatever you want. Like, you, instead of ball, you can call it, like, soccer ball. We just got to make sure here, instead of ball, it says soccer ball. And then instead of here saying ball, you would say soccer ball. This variable, you can name anything you want, the lowercase ball. You can name that potato, you can name it whatever. It's just the name that you're giving to this new object. So now let's actually move our the code we need to move um, into that class. So what we're going to need to move is basically the float for the ball y, uh, the uh, constructor for our ball y variable we need to get rid of, and then updating the ball y position we need to get rid of, and the drawing of our ellipse we need to get rid of. So basically now we're back to square one, we just have a black canvas. So let's go into our ball class, and we're going to keep it simple. Uh, we're going to pretty much copy everything that we just had into this new class. Uh, in the next video, uh, that we're going to change some variables to actually be uh, vectors instead of just floats. So I think in the next video we'll cover uh, the acceleration part and in this video we'll just create this class and we'll also do a check on collision for the bottom part so we know to reset uh, the position. Uh, so what are some of the variables that we want to create? Obviously we want to have an x and y position. So you can do uh, float, you have to declare the type. And you can either do like x position comma y position so that they're both on the same line. 
or you can just do them separately. Whoops. Both are reasonable. You can do both. Um, it depends on the, and the readability and what you feel comfortable with. I'm fine with just having them both on the same line just because they're both positioned. And it'll make more sense in the next video when we actually change it to vectors. But now we have an X position and a Y position. Uh, next, uh, we need uh, we need a speed. Uh, so we'll call it, I guess we'll call it speed. And I think that's all we need for what we just had. No, we also need a size. So let's do float size. And uh, because it's an ellipse, you know, we might want to call this radius, just because it's a circle. But I think those are all the variables that we need. So now we can do something called ball. And this is basically like the constructor function. This is basically where we say like x position equals something, y position equals something, and so on. So the x position, uh, we want to be in the center of the screen for the for the x position, x position which is the width. Uh, so what we can do is we also have to keep in mind uh, by default. Uh, processing it draws shapes uh, to the top left corner unless you specify the center uh, center mode or what is it called like ellipse mode something like that we'll do that in the next video but we'll make the assumption that everything's drawn uh, from the top left corner of the shape uh, so let's do uh, let's just see what we get when we do width divided by two and for y position we'll do a hundred. Uh, radius, we'll make it, uh, I think we did 50. And speed, uh, we'll do 10. So now I have all our variables initialized. Now we need to have two important variables, or I'm sorry, functions. Uh, we need a draw and we need an updating one. So that's kind of like what we did in draw. So let's do draw first. So we'll do void and we'll call it display. We don't have to call it draw. It's best not to call it draw just a different name. So like display or show, something like that. And that's where we're gonna put in the no stroke, uh, fill, we'll do 255. And then we'll draw our ellipse. And we need an X and Y and then the radius. So X position, Y position, radius, radius. And if we just do that, we actually have enough to actually show our object. So in draw, again, draw is a looping function. We can do ball dot display. And if we do this, we should see the ball on screen. And we do. And it's in the center of the screen. But it's not moving. So we're going to do that next. So back in ball, we'll make another uh, function void and we'll call this uh, move this is basically where we tell to update its y position so y position and I believe it's plus equals because going down you're adding and going back up you're subtracting so plus equals speed and that's the same thing as saying uh, y position equals Y position plus speed. Now we need to call this in our sketch as well. So we can do ball dot, and it was what? Move. Now we should be back to where we were, which we are. Perfect. So we basically moved everything about the ball into its own object. Uh, it's good for organization, of course. It's good um, just to keep all your objects separate and everything you need to call separated. Um, I'm not too sure why, but you could, like some people usually take this and move it down here. You can do this, so they basically move it uh, from 
its own class object, like its own file to the sketch. It should technically work. Let me just cut this out. And we'll just see if this works. Yeah, it still works. Uh, it's your choice, really. Uh, I don't like doing this because I don't like to see a lot of um, code on one file unless it's absolutely necessary. So let's paste that back in. And now what we're going to do is we're going to reset the ball position uh, whenever it uh, reaches the uh, bottom of the screen. So what we can do, because we're calling, uh, you know, we can do two different things. Um, we can create a function. We can call it like void uh, check bottom if we want. And we can do two different things at this point. We can either under move do check bottom or in draw we could do ball dot uh, check bottom. The reason why we can do both is because the move function of the ball is being called in draw. So it's already being looped constantly. And obviously we want to be constantly checking if it, the ball hits the bottom. Uh, so it's really your call. Uh, what I prefer to do is have the check bottom call in the move function already. So basically keep it as it is right now. And what we want to do check, for the check bottom, we want to basically check if the Y position of the ball is equal to the height. Uh, because again, zero is at the top, the height of the screen is at the bottom. And again, keeping into consideration uh, that the uh, ellipse shape is drawn from the top left, we might need to take in consideration uh, the size of the ball. Uh, so first we'll try it without the size, just to see what it looks like. So uh, to start, we just basically need an if statement. So that's how you draw an if statement, really. And in these parentheses, you actually put in what you want to check. And it's basically a comparison. So we want to know if the y position is greater than or equal to the height. Now, if this is true, uh, you know, we can either print to the log, or, you know, print, you know, blah, 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 and see if it works. We can do that right now. And you see at the bottom here, we're getting that SSSS, like all that nonsense. So we know it's working. So instead of printing something, what do we essentially want to do? Uh, at this point, we want to just reset the ball's position. Of course, you know, later on, we'll want to, you know, reset the score, you know, log a new high score, if it is a new high score, things like that. Uh, but right now, all we want to do is reset the position. And that's only the Y position. Uh, but we'll also reset the X position because eventually we're going to add in a means for this ball to change its X position. So let's just copy this too. So X position equals width divided by 2, Y position equals 100. Put it back here. Make sure the indentation is good. And now, if we play and the ball drops, it's resetting. Now the one last thing that we're missing uh, actually, I don't think we're missing anything. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, eventually, what we'll want to do, uh, probably we'll do it in the next video for sure, is when we do acceleration, we want to reset the acceleration so that it's not, it's slow up here and drops and goes really fast, and then when it's reset, it starts off slow again. So we'll need to add a call into check bottom to reset basically our gravity once we add that. But that's going to be in the next video. Uh, so that's going to be it for this tutorial. Uh, again, to recap, we basically made our own ball class and our own ball object. We created our, we uh, first declared our variables, then we initialized our variables here. We have a display where we draw our circle. We have a move function where we tell it to move downwards. Um, and we also have a collision check for check bottom, which basically asks, hey, 
if our y position is greater than or equal to our height, let's reset our x and y position back to where it starts. And then in our sketch, uh, we just declare our variable ball equals well, ball is ball, and then our ball equals a new ball object. And then in our draw, that's where we're able to do ball dot display, and then ball dot move. So this is basically saying, hey, you know, for our ball, let's call the function display. For our ball, let's call the function move. And in our move, we have a check bottom. So that's why everything works. Uh, so if you like the video, please uh, leave a like, comment if you have any questions. Uh, I'll link some uh, more tutorials at the end of the video, also in the description. I'll put in some links for some good processing tutorials and other channels. Uh, but also make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, it'll be much appreciated, and I'll see you in the next video.